Yeah, it was. It's pleasing. Um, you know, always want to win. But going up there is, uh, you know, ever since I've played here, it's always been a bit bit tough. They always play well up there. So it was really pleasing. Um, I think it was pretty close there in that third quarter and in the last quarter they came back. But it was good good to finish off well. What was it like having so many changes in the side? Uh, it's, it's not a uh, massive issue, I don't think. Yeah, it's different. You have a few different players running around alongside of you. But... We, we trained together and then I think the East Perth um, alignment has really helped that. So the game plans are roughly the same. Um, I, I, it was fine having that many changes. Is it reflective with those sorts of changes and the boys that come in haven't played a lot, most of them, mm. that the coach and the staff are starting to look at the list to, to make some decisions beyond the end of the season? Well, is that why we made so many changes? Do you, is that, is that what you think? some of those boys didn't have any play. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't really think so. We've been forced a little bit with injuries, some of those things. But also we've had some players playing some pretty good waffle form. Like Ash, Ash Smith's been playing really well and so has Blaine Wilson. So it is, you know, you do need to have a look on the future. But at the same time, we still have to go week by week and perform and to play. Does it also reflect that even though some of like I've sort of said, I don't think you make the finals. Yep. Have you guys not given up on the finals though? Oh, certainly not. No, no, there's always... When, um, when you still, everyone talks about mathematically when you're still a chance, everyone still wants to play finals. Um, we do realise where we sit and it's going to be hard, um, but we certainly don't give up, no. But do you look at the run, because you, you say mathematically, yeah. but with who's in front of you, yeah. each of them are the teams in front of you for that seventh or eighth spot. Yep. Is that something more specific in terms of identifying a task ahead? Uh, I think individually players might look at it. We haven't spoken about it as a team, but it will be, definitely, because I think we've got what, Adelaide, mm. Essendon, Gold Coast and Collingwood. Mm. So, yeah, they're above us. So if we, can, if we could win all those games, um, plus a couple of others, well, yeah, we'll probably sneak in. What do you think is the big thing the team needs to improve to be able to knock off teams like that? I think Simo spoke about it after the game. I think he spoke about being um, tough enough for long enough. And that's probably been the thing this year is when we're going all right, play some pretty good football but then we'll have a period where we just for whatever reason we either um, switch off a little bit opposition raises their game and we can't quite handle that at the moment the good sides really do that well and that's what we've been working at through training doing a few simulations um, so I think that's improved but certainly to get better and to be a better side we have, we have to get better at that what about personally uh, yourself bringing out the captaincy and having it run a few weeks uh, ago as well um, yeah Enjoying that and possibly, you know, next year beyond? Um, yeah, so we're doing a bit of a rotation at the moment with that stuff. And it's something I enjoyed. Yeah, it was fine. So um, Darren Glass, the way he led from, I think, the six or seven years he was here, you certainly pick up a lot of tips from him. But um, the leadership group, what we're about, is probably more a collective message at the moment, what we're trying to do. So setting the standards and what we're talking about. Um, if it came along, it'd be great, but it'd be a group um, effort anyway. Has it been difficult getting the continuity of message given it's coming from different voices each week? Uh, well, no, no, it hasn't been because that's what we've tried to make sure. Yes, everyone has uh, personalities and put a little bit different spin on it, but it is still the same message about how we want to play and how we want to go about it. Um, I think that's a pleasing thing. Do you think they need a strong leader, though, the, the one person that's Oh, look, I think everyone needs that. But I think um, good teams, good organisations, they have a lot of good um, leaders or senior people around the environment. So that'll be something that'll be looked forward, um, you know, either over the break or whenever it happens. But certainly every good organisation needs a strong leader, but it's also the people below them as well. Is it coincidence that Glass and Worsfold are defenders, two of the lowest serving players yeah. in the club? Is it coincidence or defender a good choice for a captain? Um, oh, look, I think... For, uh, you, well you see the great game differently, I think, down back compared to, say, in the midfield or up forward. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It's probably a bit of coincidence. Um, it's a little bit like cricket with, you know, can bowlers make good captains or wicket keepers? I think if you, the, the best leader can do it, regardless of where they play. Um, but certainly, I think, as a defender, you can, see the whole, you can see the whole game because normally it's in, in front of you. So you can pick up things, you can direct quite well. 
I don't think that would have a bearing on how they made the decision. Just, we've been talking about it you know, with the prospect of you, Donna. Yep. Is it a bit more because of the modern day game where the, you know, there's a lot of the zoning off defending and press that comes like Darren runs around you guys at the far very important to Frio and so on? You, yeah. you, can you see what we're, we're, where we're thinking there about a defender being more beneficial for West Coast in the next few years? Um, yeah, I do understand that, yeah, um, because uh, I think the game's gone from, say, 10 years ago. It used to be very simple, and it's just you're man on man, and you just beat your bloke, and there weren't too many tactics, whereas now you have to understand what the team's trying to achieve, what the opposition team's trying to do, and try to read the game really well. So probably if you're the back of, um, if you're the, back of the zone, you can pick those things up and help direct players. So every position's important, but... I would, yeah, a, a backman could help, but I don't think it's necessary just to have to be a backman, yeah. Jonathan, what's the plan with the weekend off when you're the rest of the group? Yep, so uh, we'll do our meetings and recovery today and tomorrow with our training, uh, and then we'll get four days off, so it's, it's a good chance to just relax and get a little bit of, um, um, well, just a bit of time away from the club. So it's still, one of the messages we've been pushing is away from the club, you have to be making smart decisions about your football because our life is our football. Um, we're going to head down south with a few few blokes and we'll probably just relax. Hopefully we get to do a bit of fishing down there as well. So hopefully the weather holds out for us. But it's just a just a chance just for a couple of days to refresh and then uh, come back. I think we train Sunday and then away we go again. The second buy in a season, is it necessary? Do you think it uh, yeah, I, I like it. I like it. So I think this year it's been eight games by, eight games by, six games. So I think it is, it is pretty good, yes. Um, I think the demands of the game get more and more each year. We're, we're very good here with our, pre, our pre-season that we get a lot of work into there, then we do a bit of recovery, and then during the week it's about getting recovery right and getting your body right, and um, you get all your fitness during the games now. You're only one voice in nearly 800. Do the players want the two buys? Let's just extend that into next year. Yep. It's a tighter schedule from the sound of things. Yep. Will, you, will you players push for the two buys again next year? Um, I think the players would potentially enjoy the two buys. I know here at West Coast, it's not something we talk about, but I think the feeling would be they enjoy the two buys. Mm-hmm. But if we had one buy, it would, it would still be fine because the best thing I think about um, footy groups is that you can adapt and you have to be able to adapt as well. So if we had two or one, it wouldn't be an issue. But two does help, I think. When is a player group will you sort of then have you confess that you'll talk about it somewhere? Yep. Have a break, come back, yep. and six week block yep. that your finals aren't gone. When will you address that? Oh, when we do that, well, it won't be a specific time we address it. We, we try to do it uh, every, every week going forward, so from last month to next month going forward. But we understand, obviously, the closer you get to finals, the more you need to win. So we'll probably sit down today at the meeting, work on a few things that we want to improve on for the rest of the year. But it's also always an ongoing thing as well. Um, So we'll we'll, uh, see what we need to improve. We spoke about being tough enough for long enough. So that's just a basic thing of the game, setting good standards at training, um, which we then roll into the rest of the year, in your break, and then into the pre-season next year. And this is put you on the spot, but of the six games, how many do you think Dean Cox will play? Yep, uh, he'd love to play all of them, and uh, um, it'll just be a thing to see how he manages it with, with his body. So we've had the four tools being rotated around a little bit. Um, I'm not sure how they'll go. Simo, I think Simo's spoken about it, that they'll have to weigh it up during this break, so they'll probably talk about that. But, you know, I'd like to think of his body as well. He'd be able to play all of them, but it'll just depend with what, what they want to do, where they want to go in the future, and how it works out. There's been a couple of boys, Matt Prittis, Eric McKenzie, um, probably Josh Darling as well in attack that have carried a big load. How, how much do they need this break, do you think, in um, the last one? Yeah, and, that, and that's why I think two breaks can be beneficial um, because Pritter is very professional in the way he goes about his football with his recovery and the way he trains, but even he gets a bit tired. So it, that, that will help those type of players, definitely. You're used to having the ball in your hands uh, how much yeah. Have you guys been stuck into Eric McKenzie after that switch? <laughs> we, uh, I actually didn't. I actually didn't see. I didn't see it until after the game, and then we started. No, yeah, no. I made. I did until then. Uh, oh, I know. Until after the game when we raised it, because I wasn't sure who kicked it. I saw it hit the post, and I wasn't sure who kicked it, and just kept playing. And 
we had a fair a bit of a laugh yeah, afterwards with him. Yeah, but yeah. it's just no, nah, it's part of football. It just he doesn't try to do it. Um, you know, even very good kicks, you make you make a wrong decision or you you stuff it up. So. Um, fine or anything like that. Or anything. Uh, we might try to think of one. So I don't think he's kicked a goal this year. He's probably thinking, oh, beautiful, kick a goal, but hit the post. Yeah. Just on kick-ins, you you do the main duties. Uh, stats flying around the two sides you've faced recently: Fremantle and Sydney. Fremantle yep. haven't conceded an inside fifty from an opposition kick in the last four weeks. Okay. Talking about ten percent. Yep. What are the types of things you're confronting as a man kicking in against those two sides? Yeah. Making it difficult to take it coast to coast to go down the other end. Um, well, I think th their their team in general they have a lot of smart players that read the, read the game pretty well. So. Most teams are either man on man or a bit of a zone, but I think they adjust really well. Um, and I suppose if you kick the ball to a contest, they're very good at killing that contest as well, so not letting it out the back or they just don't get outmarked. And um, that's why they are where they are, the two best sides, because they're very good with a contested footy, you know, rarely get beaten. And even if they do get beaten, they make it hard for the opposition to keep going. So you need to have good structures and good setups but you also need to be good enough to adapt to what the game's telling you. And I think those two sides do that. Is it a case like checkers, you're trying to release one and then get the next release from a kick-in so that you yeah. the chain down the field? Is that what you're looking for? Oh, yeah, cer certainly that's what you try to look for. So you try to have a few you know, set, set plays or areas where you want to kick the ball, but I think the main thing you have to have is movement. So if we go, you know... Um, we're going to kick it to Joe Blow in the pocket and then we're going to try to do this. It, it, it doesn't work because then um, no one wants to move because, oh, that's where the ball's meant to be going. So the more movement you have, the more it makes it harder for the opposition to realise where it's going. So that creates space as well. And space is what you want to look for, for uh, regardless if you're kicking in or in general play kicking. Fortnight away, obviously, so probably not central on the mind just yet, but Richmond, they came across here and touched you up last yeah. year. Oh yeah, it did yeah it does. Um, I remember that we were just we were just poor, didn't show up to play, and um, not that that'll happen again. But it's certainly something that we want to do all the time is make sure we're consistent. But you want to be consistently good. You still have bad days, but you want to make sure your bad days aren't aren't bad. So um, we'll certainly you know as I said regroup and treat it like now the different game. But we will have to make sure that. We're on a, on a game because I think they've been playing some pretty good football there last month, and once they're up and going, they they can be hard to stop. So it'll be be important for us to start well.